Flight Lieutenant Jerry Rawlings of Ghana is remembered for many things, one of which is the execution of three former heads of state and five other generals during his first tenure as military president of Ghana. In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the story of the arrest and execution of the former heads of state and the five generals. We present their names, faces, and profiles, and also present the reaction of Ghanaians and the international community to the executions. We shall present their names in no particular order, but beginning with the three heads of states. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. The first person is General Ignatius Achembo. He was 47 years old when he was executed. Achembo came to power on 13th January 1972 when he removed civilian President Kofi Busia from power in a bloodless military coup. He remained in office till July 1978 when he was removed by his own deputy, General Fred Akufo. Upon his removal from office, Achembong ended his military career and went back home and lived a private life. When Jerry Rawlings took over as military head of state, he ordered for the arrest of Achembong. Achembong was then taken before a military court martial and accused of corruption. He was pronounced guilty by the court martial and sentenced to death by firing squad. Jerry Rawlings, being the military head of state at the time of the sentence, gave his approval for the execution, and on 16th June 1979, Achembong was taken before the stakes and shot. This brought to an end the life and times of General Ignatius Kutu Achembong. It was the first time in the history of Africa that a former head of state of a country would be tied to the stakes and fired. The international community was shocked, but for Rawlings, the execution needed to be carried out to, in his words, purge Ghana of corrupt elements, and there was no apology, no going back on it. The execution of General Ignatius Achembon was the first of many executions to come. Other former heads of state would also be lined up and executed in the coming days. General Ignatius Achempong was one of the earliest trained military officers of Ghana. He joined the military in his youth. He was born in September 1931. At his birth, Ghana was known as Gold Coast and was under colonial governance. He was born to Catholic parents who gave him the name Ignatius at baptism. Ignatius attended Catholic primary and secondary schools in Traboam and Kumasi, both in the Ashanti region of Ghana. He worked briefly as a stenographer and as a teacher before joining the army. He was sent to England by the government of his country for military training at Aldershot. On completion of his training, he was commissioned for the Ghana army in 1959. On his return to Ghana, he was deployed by the military to several military institutions and formations. During the Congo War, Achembong served as a member of the United Nations Peacekeeping Force. He served as military head of state of Ghana for six years. He was married to his wife, Faustina Achembong. The second head of state that was executed was General Akwasi Afrifa. Afrifa became military head of state of Ghana following the unexpected resignation of his boss, General Joseph Ankara. Kwame Nkrumah was the first prime minister of Ghana. The constitution of Ghana was later amended to provide for the office of president and Kwame Nkrumah also became the first president of Ghana. While in office, Nkrumah traveled to Hanoi, then capital of North Vietnam on a state visit on the invitation of the then leader of the country. While in Hanoi, his government back home in Ghana was toppled in a military coup. Young military officers like Emmanuel Kotoka and Akwasia Afrifa were actively involved in the planning and execution of the coup. 
The coup brought Nkrumah's rule to an end, but the coup plotters brought a more senior military officer on board as head of state in the person of General Joseph Ankara. Ankara accommodated the coup plotters in his government and gave them juicy positions. It was General Ankara who brokered the Aburi Accord between Lieutenant Colonel Emeka Dumegu Ojuku of Nigeria and Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon in his last attempt to prevent the outbreak of a civil war in next door Nigeria. General Ankara also had a friend from Nigeria called Francis Aton Zeribe. Zeribe was an international businessman and arms dealer. Ankara was accused of engaging in corrupt practices with Athon Zeribe and was forced to resign from office. Ankara resigned from office. This is how Akwasi Afrifa became his successor as the new military head of state of Ghana. Afrifa governed for a short while and saw to the conduct of democratic election. He handed over power to the winner, Dr. Kofi Busia as second democratically elected president of Ghana. Afrifa then retired from the army and engaged mainly in farming. He also took part in politics. He later contested for a seat in parliament and won, but was never alive to occupy the seat. He was arrested in his farm at Mumpong on the orders of Jerry Rawlings. He was detained tried by a special court martial on charges of corruption while in office and sentenced to die by firing squad. Under approval of Rawlings, he was tied to the stakes and fired on the 26th day of June 1979, 10 days after the execution of Ignatius Achempong. His body was buried without ceremony at the Nsawam Prison Cemetery in Ghana. In 2002, President John Kufour gave approval for the exhumation of his remains from the cemetery for reburial in his hometown of Krobo, following a petition by the wives of the slain generals. General Akwasi Afrifa was born on 24th April 1936. At the time of his death in 1979, he was 43 years old. He attended the Mons Officer Cadet School in Aldershot, England. He also attended the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, also in England. He also attended the School of Infantry Heath, United Kingdom. He was also an alumnus of the Defence College, Teshi, Ghana. He was commissioned in 1960 as Second Lieutenant for the Ghana Armed Forces. He worked in the Army for several years. He was married to Christian Afrifa, and together they had nine children. The next head of state that was executed was General Fred Akufo. He was the last head of state before Rawlings. He is the person that succeeded General Achempong through a palace coup led by him. On taking over from Achempong, he began his administration smoothly. But in no time, a coup was staged against his government by soldiers led by Jerry Rawlings. The coup was not successful, and Jerry and his associates were arrested and detained. It was General Fred that constituted a special court martial to try them. Rawlings and associates were pronounced guilty and sentenced to death by firing squad by the military court martial. While in detention, awaiting the approval of Fred Akufo for their execution, a group of junior officers broke into the detention facility and freed Jerry Rawlings and others. They then caused the removal of General Akufo and the enthronement of Rawlings as the new military head of state of Ghana. While in office, Rawlings ordered for the arrest of former military heads of state on charges of corruption and General Akufo was among those arrested. He was taken before a special court martial and pronounced guilty and sentenced to death by firing squad. On 26 June 1979, he was tied to the stakes and shot at the Teshi military range, Ghana. 
This brought to an end the earthly life of General Frederick William Kwasi Akufo. Fred was born in March 1937, and at the time of his execution in 1979, he was just 42 years old. Fred attended Presbyterian Boys School in Odumashi, Krobo, and later enlisted in the Ghana Army in 1957. He trained at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, United Kingdom, and was commissioned for Ghana in 1960. He also attended the National Defence College, India, in 1973. He was married to Emily Akufo. Five other generals were also executed. The first of them, in no particular order, was General Robert Kotei. Kotei was the Commissioner for Information in the government of General Ignatius Achempon. He also served as Commissioner for Housing. He later served as the Chief of Defense Staff in the government of General Fred Akufo. He was thus very close to power. When Jerry Rawlings seized power from General Fred Akufo, there was an announcement that all former political office holders should report to the nearest police stations to them. Kotei was one of the first to heed the call. He surrendered himself to the officer in charge of the Achimota police station in Ghana. The police communicated to the military that Kotei had submitted himself. He was then placed under arrest and later taken away to face trial on charges of corruption. Some reports have stated that he was taken before the court martial, while other reports have stated that he was never tried at all. On 26 June 1979, Major General Robert Kotei was executed by firing squad. Just like others executed with him, his body was buried without any ceremony. He was buried at the Nsawan Prison Cemetery. He was married to Nancy Kotei, and together they had nine children. He was 43 years old at the time of his execution. The next person was Roger Feli. Roger Feli was a colonel in the Ghana Army. He was born in May 1941. Roger had served as Minister of Foreign Affairs from 1975 to 1979. He was commissioned in 1963 as a second lieutenant for the Ghana Army upon his completion of military training in Ghana and in the United Kingdom. He was a member of the National Redemption Council headed by General Ignatius Achempong. Before his appointment as Foreign Affairs Minister, Feli had served as Commissioner for Works and Housing and also served at various times as Commissioner for Trade and Industry, Commissioner for Finance and Economic Planning. He was thus considered by Rawlings government as one of the senior military officers who was too close to power and needed to be eliminated. On 26 June 1979, Roger Feli was lined up along with other top-ranking military officers and executed by firing squad at the Teshi military range at Teshi on the outskirts of Ghana. Roger Feli was buried without ceremony at the Nsawan Prison Cemetery. His remains were however exhumed along with others and taken home for reburial on the permission of President John Kufo following the petition submitted to him by widows of the executed military officers. Roger Feli was 38 years old at the time of his execution. He was the youngest of the persons executed. The next person was A Vice Marshal George Yao Bokie. He was born on 25th December 1937. He served as commander of the Ghana Air Force and a member of the Supreme Military Council of Ghana under General Ignatius Achempo. As commander of the Air Force, Flight Lieutenant Jerry Rawlings was a junior officer to him. When Jerry took over as military head of state, one of the persons arrested and detained was A Vice Marshal George Yao Boke. On 26 June 1979, he was lined up and executed along with other high-ranking military officers. 
At the time of his execution, he was 41 years old. He was trained at home and abroad. He left behind a wife, Beatrice Afuaboke, with whom he had five children. The other person executed was Rear Admiral Joy Kobla Amedume. Rear Admiral Joy had served as the Chief of Naval Staff. He was thus considered to be too close to power. When Rawlings came to power, Joy was arrested and detained on charges of corruption. And on 26 June 1979, he was executed by firing squad along with all the generals. His body was buried without the usual military ceremonies, but several years after, his body was released to his family for a burial during the government of President John Kofo. The last but not the least of the eliminated generals was General Edward Kwaku Utuka. Utuka was a high-ranking military officer who had received training at home and abroad. On his return to Ghana, he was posted on several military assignments, and when the military took over the reins of power in Ghana, Utuka became an integral part of the military government. Rawlings considered him as corrupt and ordered for his arrest and detention. He was executed on the same day with General Ignatius Achempo and was therefore one of the first two persons executed by the Rawlings administration. Rawlings justified these killings and told the people of Ghana and the world that the killings had become necessary in his bid to rid the country of corrupt elements. He called it, quote, house cleansing. He stated that Ghana was never going to witness transformational development if the generals were allowed to stay alive. For Rawlings, the elimination of the generals was the beginning of progress and development for Ghana. Several persons in Ghana went into jubilation over the elimination of the generals. They saw Rawlings as the man of the moment and the Spartan that Ghana badly needed at the time. Others still from Ghana, however, disagreed with Rawlings. They rejected his modus operandi. They called it dictatorial. In this category, we, mostly Ghanaians, who were abroad and could voice out their opinions without fear of arrest and detention. Several scholars and human rights activists also criticized Rawlings over the elimination of the generals. They described the military trials as shabby and devoid of the minimum baseline for fair hearing. They described the court martial as heavily biased with a predetermined verdict against the generals. Though there were indeed cases of corruption in the country following many years of military rule, it was expected by human rights activists and public affairs analysts and lawyers that the accused persons should have been afforded better opportunities for fair hearing. For the families of the executed generals, Rawlings' elimination of their parent or husband was the worst sin to be committed against them by Jerry Rawlings. When John Kufour became the president of Ghana, the widows of the executed generals wrote to him and requested for his permission to exhume the remains of their husbands for proper burial. President Kufour granted the request and the graves of the slain generals were exhumed and taken to their respective homes by the family members for reburial. Kofor justified his action as being in line with the need to engender healing and national reconciliation in the country. While most people will continue to justify the killings and accept the reasons given by Rawlings, others will certainly continue to query their approach and will ask whether corruption has indeed been completely eliminated from the face of Ghana after the killings. The execution of the generals by firing squad in Ghana during the government of Flight Lieutenant Jerry Rawlings shall remain a heated topic in Ghana, Africa, the world at large, and in several circles for many more years to come. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in Easter and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video. I remain your friend and host, the Keminu Dim, wishing you the best of time, even as you continue to accompany me on this historical journey 
across the continent of Africa and the world.